Welcome to part three of a small PM research model steam engine. This episode shows the right and wrong ways to clean up the spokes of a cast flywheel. Using various tools, the results go from being okay to not so good. Before I get any comments, please be aware this is a tutorial, so I am purposely going to do it wrong and be too heavy handed and use the wrong tools to do the job. To start off the proceedings, I'm going to use a small drum type sander in my bench mounted Proxon motor tool. What's wrong with this? Well nothing apart from the abrasive part of the drum sander is falling from together. And the drum sander is a little bit too big to go in the smaller corners. You must not, I repeat, you must not use a piece of equipment like this. It's a very violent cutting tool. And you run the risk of completely destroying the part that you're working on. As you can clearly see in this clip, it's making short work of the excess metal that I need to remove. But it grabs and it's really violent. Plus because this is such a coarse cutting tool, it's leaving grooves as it goes past and you can do without this. If in the course of making this video I destroy this flywheel, I will have to buy a new one from PM Research. A few viewers have commented to say that they've built these engines and the flywheel was okay and didn't need all this treatment. This I think is an older kit. And maybe they have been improved since this one was made. This tool is so difficult to use, you wouldn't believe how firmly I'm having to hold the part to stop the tool from destroying it. And even then it's trying its best to dig in. You can see how much vibration is going on, as the multiple teeth of this cutter really bite into the metal. Plus of course, as I've just said, the grooves don't look too good either. This is where the job started to go wrong. Suddenly the tool grabbed the metal and dug a lump out of it. Now this is not good. But I will carry on regardless and see what the end result is like. I thought I would try a rotary grinder. I started off with a small one, then I fitted one that was of a larger diameter, but this wouldn't go right into the corners. But it's okay for the rest of the spoke cutouts. You will also notice I'm tilting the flywheel because I don't want a sharp edge. And if you look closely at the flywheel in this clip, you can see there are some blow holes in the casting. So maybe it's going to need some filler as well. It's very important to make sure that every one of these spokes are the same shape. If one is a bit bigger than the rest, it will jump out at you when you look at the engine. It's not too bad though, the top spoke is currently a bit thinner than the rest, but then I haven't removed quite as much metal from the others yet. I think it's time to go back to the needle file for a while and correct the spoke where the cutter started to dig in. I'm also going around all of the inner edges as well. Here for instance I'm trying some emery cloth to see what effect that has, and it's okay. It's 100 grit and it's very coarse. This job is taking an extraordinary length of time to do. And then there's still the problem of the blowholes in the casting to contend with. I think it's time to go back to the smaller grinding wheel so I can get into the corners. All this vibration, especially the vibration caused by the very coarse cutter, has caused the screw to work loose that holds the ball joint to the main shaft that in turn holds the drill. When doing a job like this with such a fine cutter, the particles that are coming off the metal are also very fine. It's a good idea to wear a mask, I think. All was going quite well with this small cutter until the end flew off. I changed the cutter for a new one because I do have quite a few of these. And once again, I'm constantly removing the metal from the inside areas of the spokes and the outer rim. I was still finding this job very laborious and also don't forget I still need to round the edges of the spokes. At this stage I thought it was probably a good idea to revisit the drum sander just to remove more material. I fitted a new ring of emery cloth into the tool. And this is quite a coarse grit so I'm sure it's going to remove much more metal than the small grinder was doing. Yes, this is working much better and it's a lot easier to control it as well. It's just a pity it's not a little bit smaller so I could get all the way into the corners. But you can't have everything. After a while using this drum sander, I got the flywheel to this shape, which is a lot closer to what I need. By this time I definitely needed a break from grinding the spokes. 
Over now to my boxwood lathe, and in the chuck, there is a piece of steel bar which is a quarter of an inch in diameter, and I've centre drilled it at each end. I'm going to apply some Loctite 603 to the shaft, which will stick the flywheel firmly to it, but before I do that, I'm going to remove the grub screw using an Allen key as shown here. It was warm in the workshop, so the Loctite cured quite quickly, and now the flywheel is secured to the shaft. I'd already reduced the diameter of the centre boss slightly by holding the flywheel in the chuck using the outside part of the jaws, but it wasn't true enough. I decided to recut the centre boss exactly the same at both sides. First one side, and here is the other. Oddly enough, the original machining around the edge of the flywheel was a bit chattery, but now, as I've remachined it, it's not chattery at all. I'm finishing the job off with some emery cloth. By using emery cloth instead of Scotch-Brite, which is much finer, it gives the impression of machine tool marks on the outer rims of the flywheel. I have a very useful small bench vise, and here I'm heating the flywheel where it joins the shaft, and once it gets to a certain temperature, it's very easy to tap it out. The flywheel is now very loose on the shaft, and because it's hot, I'm using some Scotch-Brite to hold it while I remove it from the shaft. And now, viewers, without warning, it's painting time. This is some stuff I bought a while back, and I've never tried it. And I suggest that the more critical of my viewers don't bother writing in, don't worry, the engine is not going to be painted orange. This was a can of paint that I bought from Halfords. I don't know whether it's etching primer or what it is, it's just called adhesion improver. And this job is ideal to try it out and see what it's like. First of all, I think I'll paint the flywheel. The spokes are not 100% just yet, but they're getting very close. It's getting more difficult to see where I need to remove more metal from, because the reflection of the metal itself is always a problem. When this happens, before applying any filler or doing any more rubbing down, I suggest that you paint the part, it makes it much easier to see. Most of the time when I paint cast iron bases, I don't use primer, because the finish on the base is more than good enough to key the paint, but I thought, well, I have half a pot full of this stuff left, I'll give it a try on the base. There wasn't that much paint available still in the pot, so I put it onto the base a bit on the thin side. But it doesn't matter because very shortly I'm going to spray the entire base using some HMG satin black paint. And that's it for this episode. Here's a normal shot of the paint drying, and once it's dry, I'll continue the job. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.